cedar shake roof. Beautiful, lasts a very long time, but also can get damaged by both wind and hail. Let's talk about what that looks like. Time to get on this one. out of place. The nail's still here, but it's completely rotted. Galvanized nails, so they're all rusting out and now we have slide out shingles. Yep. So what you're trying to tell me right now is we're on a very dangerous roof. Danger, Will Robinson. Awesome. Danger. That's good news. So we've got felt paper that is layered in between the courses of the cedar shake so if we end up having to replace any of these and we have to get nails up under this what do we do with the underlayment the underlayment also has to be dealt with so when it gets replaced um, that leads to the replacement of a lot more of the cedar shake so it doesn't really require there to be a ton of damage uh, but the way that it's constructed will make a great deal of difference on what gets approved or not. Fascinating. So cedar shake is installed by putting a course of cedar shake down and two nails going in. And then they put a course of 30 pound felt at the top quarter of it. Well, exactly two times the exposure up on top of that shake, because these are really long. And they put that down and they're installed with cap nails with plastic or metal caps. And those cap nails go through the felt and then through the tail end of that cedar shake that you've installed. And the next course of cedar shake is installed, and then another course of felt, and then the next course of cedar shake, and another course of felt, and it keeps going like that, interlayment in between all of them. By the time you get to that third course, the butt end of the shake lines up with the felt from the first course. In order to remove a cedar shake and replace it with another one, we have to remove the nails from that felt, which is also attached to the course of cedar just above this shake, and we have to pull it out. Now, there are methods to rip that out and leave the nails behind, but then when you put a new shake in, you have to rip that new shake onto the existing nails. <laughs> And so you're installing a shake that's already damaged. It might hold, but it's definitely not going to have the same hold strength as it would if the nails went straight down into the wood for obvious reasons. And you're also really risking whether or not you're going to tear up that felt when you put it in anyway. Ultimately, the only way to install a new shake to pre-damaged condition properly is to have two new nails going through the felt or through the course of shake above it then through the felt and then into your course of shake and if you get unlucky enough to have a cap nail right there you have a whole another issue damaging the underlayment is still not a pre-damaged condition it doesn't meet the policy requirement to bring you back to pre-loss so we can't leave nail holes behind in the felt it's not allowed a nail hole is damage. A nail hole is damage. This is Zach Gwynn. He is one of our in-house public adjusters and our resident cedar expert. We sent him out to the especially tough cedar shake and cedar shingle claims. He is going to describe what it is that he's looking for when he inspects roofs. Now, generally speaking, the where it hits, there's a raccoon footprint. Uh, where it hits, the split can be on it, unless you're talking a, a hand split one like this, where they're thinner and thicker places, because it may hit and push that down and split it in a thin spot. But you're looking for fresh splits, splits that look the same age as the hits that you're looking at. 
It's like a really dry, bad tasting cigar. Oh my God, you put that in your mouth? Copper Valleys are gonna be a very interesting area to look at. We wanna see if there's any hail dents in the Copper Valleys because they go up and under the cedar shake and under those layers of felt. And they're fastened to the decking underneath those. So we have to get those out if they are dented. We are looking for hail indentations and existence of any kind of hail damage to the soft metals just to see if there's any damage to the cedar shakes. But while we're looking for the soft metal damage, um, there are certain areas that are especially important to find that damage. You want to find hail damage on the valleys, mostly because the valley metal goes under both sides of the cedar shake to the cedar shake, the cedar cedar, the cedar 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 shake and the underlayment and so to remove that and put new valley metal in you have to replace the underlayment and the cedar shakes that are lining the valley that underlayment is supposed to be continuous and it's supposed to overlap so often so you can't just cut a piece of underlayment in and put a new piece in under each one it has to be continuous you can't put butt ends together so you end up replacing entire slopes because of the valley metal being replaced. Now we'll take a piece of chalk and we'll chalk the valleys to see if there's any indentations that look like they were caused by hail. For this particular roof, we found that uh, since it's such a small area that we're chalking, it was easier to use soapstone for that small area to actually find the hail damage. There are several breaks in this roof that are fresh that probably aren't caused by hail, with some indentations from something that isn't hail-shaped. It's probably from some type of foot gear, foot attire, shoe. It's from a shoe. Someone walked on this and it broke off under their foot. It's called footfall damage. Footfall damage, by the way, is covered under most policies. Uh, they could say that it's from improper maintenance, but the footfall itself isn't the maintenance. So that doesn't fall under that category. Don't let them say that crap to you. That's just bull. Ultimately, footfall damage is sudden and accidental, and it isn't excluded itself under the policy. The problem with footfall damage is it would all have to be done the same day for it to be enough to really warrant a, a full replacement of any kind. So. If the roof is susceptible to foot damage, it is probably brittle. And if you are getting up on a roof that is brittle, then a minimal amount of damage could lead to a very large and costly repair because in order to replace that damage, you have to walk on it. And if you're walking on it, you're causing more damage, it causes issues. So if there is a repair in an area that you have to walk to get to it on the roof and it causes damage, in reality, you'll end up replacing all of the damage that you're causing as you're walking on it up to the point where you're replacing that one uh, damage shake. So it could lead to quite a bit more damage. So footfall damage does matter. There are plenty of times that we have caught engineers and adjusters walking on the cedar wrong and breaking it. And then going back and saying that there was footfall damage and never owned up to it. And somehow the carrier decided they're not going to pay for it for that reason don't let that happen to you have a pa involved on the roof at that time so that they can catch that stuff with wind damage on this one we've got some cedar shakes that are displaced you can see in the background um, usually along the hips and ridges and that's what we expect to see when we're looking for wind damage on a cedar shake Hips and ridges will be displaced. Let me see some of that. We also have completely missing tiles. Now, this is nailed with galvanized nails, so it's possible that the nails just plain rusted out, but there's really not much way to know 100% if that is the reason. And because there's no way to know 100%, then it could be argued that wind had something to do with it. Um, it really depends on how the policy is written for that as well. So really this roof, because there's no fresh hail damage, it's pretty worn out as it is. It needs to be replaced one way or the other. We did find missing tiles and footfall damage, which is usually covered by the policy. But the real kicker is that we found hail dents 
in the Copper Valleys. And I think that that's going to lead to quite a bit of replacement. Walking this roof is not the safest in the world, and therefore it's not the most repairable roof ever. So we might have something here. I'm going to have to dig into the policy to find out. Cedar claims are tough. Cedar shake. Cedar shake. Ultimately, if the insured isn't going to be put in a pre-damage or a pre-loss condition with that repair, then it can't be done. If there is damage that is being ignored uh, because it isn't functional damage, there needs to be some policy review. You really need a public adjuster involved when you come to a claim that has difficult scenarios or a claim where the adjuster probably doesn't know very much about what they're looking at. Get someone involved that can really dig into your policy and knows how to guide the situation so we get the right people and the right experts involved to make the right call. You need a public adjuster on your claim and you need one right away on your cedar roofs. I'm available. I'm available. Let us deal with the bull.